Muna Lee, and I'm a two-time Olympian and a track coach. My brother was like the person I chased. He was the person I wanted to be better than. He was the person that I wanted to beat. I mean, he also threatened me a lot, but that's just the rivalry between me and him. Whatever he did, I wanted to be better than him. So when it came to me competing against other women, I always thought I could beat him because I'm close to my brother and he's one of the best athletes I've ever met. To this day, I still, I thank him all the time. I was at Paul Robeson Middle School I remember racing somebody like a cop or something. They came to the school for like dare and they gave us half the playground and we raced. And he was like, you, nobody's gonna beat us down and back. I beat them down and back. And then the gym teacher was like, I want you to run track. It's like, okay. But I really wanted to play tennis. I wanted to play basketball. I wanted to do all this other stuff. And he's like, no, you should run track. And then in high school, a lot of my peers were just like, you're real fast. You're gonna go to the Olympics. And I'm like, well, I mean, I thought I was going to the WNBA, but everybody kept saying, you're going, you're going, you're going. Then I ran fast enough to make it to Olympic trials and everybody started donating for me to go. Like they would take their the rest of their lunch money and donate it to a fund so I could travel to Olympic trials. And I was like, well, I can't let everybody down. So I went and I was like, all right, I just can't get last. And I didn't. And then I was like, okay. There's two other high school girls here that, and one of them made it. That should have been me. I just didn't take it as serious. But once I realized that I could actually do it, I was like, well, the next team I'm gonna make it. And I did. The difference I saw, it was a worth ethic. It was me focusing on not chasing boys. <laughs> Just really putting in the time, the effort, getting the sleep, getting the taking care of my body, all the maintenance that goes with trying to be great. I would see all these other Olympians and how focused they were in the team that they had around them. Then I'm like, OK, I might not have the team, but I got the ethics. So I just did that. And I, then I just made sure I was beating everybody at practice. I've seen a lot of really young people start making money and forgetting that they still have to do those things like practice eat right and spending money where you don't need to spend money and then you have more people asking for money staying true to like the things that you were doing before you got the money was like key for me and then having the people that surround you to keep you balanced and humble a lot of shoe companies and people that represent us would tell us we have to go do this we have to go do that you can always tell them no I would say stick to the things you know, don't go try to be fancy. After all this stuff, like the trying to figure out what you want to do next, that's probably one of the hardest things, getting away from being an athlete to real life. Yeah, that, that's probably the hardest thing most of us go through. After a loss, I always know that there's more for me to win. I just usually go back to the drawing board with my coach or my parents or whoever motivates me and we go work on whatever I need to fix in order to win. And mentally, I just come back like, oh, I just messed up. I know I can beat them. It's never, it's never a loss loss mentally because usually I snap back and just keep going. I don't hold on to the stuff in the past because we, in track, you just, it's so many races to be won. And anybody can have a down day. Anybody can have a great day. So. The, the opportunity to win is just, it's always right there. I don't usually let other people's criticism bother me. The only people that can tell me what I did right or wrong would be my coach, who we work together. It's a business and, and it's a partnership. So if I pay him and we paying each other, he can tell me what I did wrong because what we do together, we've been doing together since I got there. Their opinions and their facts, like people that know me personally, can help me and they'll also give me the the positive feedback. 
I don't just listen to the, the bad stuff. There's always a step to what I need to work on. It's, so the negative and the criticism, I, it, it never really bothered me. As long as you're doing something, make sure you're having fun. Because if you let all the, the losing and a lot of stuff that comes with that to bother you and you're not having fun, then you kind of give up on it and it, it'll go downhill. So usually happiness is like the key. Some of the best advice I probably had, usually when I'm dealing with some things, I usually do all the fun things like movie hop or I also like to play piano. I'll do just some stuff with like my niece and nephew or I'll take some time out and go out and draw whatever I see. With me personally, as soon as I got to college, I was I went to see a sports therapist. I had to figure out how to deal with competing and training on that level, dealing with college stuff, and then going on to like being a professional athlete, I still had that therapist. Somebody that could help me think about all the things that goes with the sports and life. Because I could separate it, and then I can only be an athlete, but I was also a student, and I'm also trying to be a sister and then I want to be all these other things for all these uh, mentors and stuff for other people. I had to learn to deal with that for myself first. So they helped me organize my thoughts. That would be one thing I would tell other people to do. Don't be scared to get therapy because it's not always a bad thing. It could be good things. I do want to keep coaching. I want to be one of the better coaches overall, not just one of the best women coaches. I want to be Overall, one of the best coaches. I'm not really caring about how being the highest paid, but that comes with it. So that's what I want to work for. And I still like traveling. So if if I needed a break from coaching, I could try to be an agent, something like that, because I'm still really connected with the athletes. They, they tend to want to talk to me and ask me for advice. So I'm going to give it to them.